it's almost Valentine's Day, and to many, it's just another day. But for many who long for someone to hold on those long, lonely nights, it can feel like their world is empty or has no meaning. I'm here to remind you that it is completely fine to be by yourself. In fact, many people might confirm the fact that being alone would be the better choice. So if you're thinking about texting someone because you're lonely, just don't. Here are some stories of people who opted to try for love that went horribly wrong. Enjoy. This story isn't actually mine, it's my mom's. After getting out of an incredibly long and unpleasant marriage, my mom joined Tinder. Stella wanted to get her groove back, and I was 100% on her team. I'm an adult. I can't emphasize enough that she was not looking for a long-term connection. Her work sent her out of state for a while, and everything seemed perfect. She's going to get her rando D, and there's no chance of it getting serious. So she's sending me screenshots of the guys she's considering. I'm giving her tips on safety. And then she picks a guy. I immediately tell her that is not a wise choice. The guy's profile is 98% red flags. Whatever. She's an adult. I literally can't stop her. Somehow, in the four hours they are physically together, he figures out which flight she's taking the next day. He used that to find her final destination. And somehow finds her home address. He then uses the public tax information to find her full name, and from there, finds her Facebook, finds my dad, calls him on the phone and tells him everything, sends him pictures and screenshots of conversations, and then he starts sending my mother harassing messages that he loves her, but that he can't trust her. In the end, my mother had to call the police. We lived about 25 minutes from each other, so we agreed to meet at the beach pier about halfway between both of us. Before meeting, we had been texting and he seemed completely normal. I was already at the pier when he texted me saying he can't meet me there because his license is revoked and it's too far for him to walk. Okay, I should have just left then, but instead I agreed to meet him at a pizza place closer to him. I get there and I'm standing outside when I see him, and quickly realize the pics from his profile were at least three to five years old. Homeboy looks like the dollar store version of himself. Greasy. Looks like he hasn't showered in days. Hair undone. Holes in his shirt. I awkwardly give him a side hug and suggest we get a seat. He says, oh no, we're not getting pizza. Let's go to the park. I awkwardly say, okay... And as he talks, I realize his gums and tongue ring are stained black from smoking. By this point, I am completely turned off and I'm just keeping up with the formalities. So we get to the park, find a bench to talk, and before I can even sit down, this guy pulls me onto his lap, starts squeezing me and saying, God, baby girl, you're so cute. I awkwardly scooch away and try to get a conversation going. He pulls out his phone and starts texting for a few minutes not really listening to me, before interrupting with, Have you smoked? My friend is a plug. We can go back to my place for a bowl. I decline. Aw, oh, come on, baby girl. My place is just right there. We could go have some fun, too. I decline again. Next thing you know, he pulls me close by the face and whispers, You're so innocent. Before broad-tongued licking my face from chin to ear, Shell-shocked, I just sit there for a moment processing what just happened before I decide to fake an urgent phone call and leave. I matched with a girl and sent a lot of messages. Later that night, we talked on the phone and the conversation was going really well, so I asked her out for the next night. She agreed and then five minutes later, she tells me that she needs to tell me something. She tells me that she's permanently in a wheelchair. So I'm either a jerk if I back out now, or I'm a jerk if I lead her on. I figure, why not? It's just a date. 
and I could still have fun. Anyway, back to the story. We talk more that night and go to bed. The next morning, she calls me early and tells me she's doing something crazy. She won't tell me what it was, but she'll show me later. A few hours go by and she calls me back, tells me she's going to send me a pic of what she did. I check my messages and I see a picture of her wrist with my name now tattooed on it. We end the call and I immediately tell my friends about this crazy girl. Later that night, I'm driving to her place because I figure she can be committed enough to tattoo my name on her. I should be committed enough to go on this date. Plus, I just have to know if it's real. I'm almost at her place and realize that my car may not accommodate her wheelchair, and I know she drives, so I ask if she can drive us. I'm walking in the parking lot, and she drives up, and I get in the car. Now, I had figured she had a handicapped-enabled car. Nope. Turns out she just uses two crutches, one to drive on the gas, and the other to brake. I don't like this as we're driving on the Southern California freeway in traffic. We go eat, and she gets a phone call from her daughter. Turns out she left her 10-year-old daughter at home, and she's scared. I'm like, hey, we can go. She's like, no, it's okay. I gave her something to make her sleep. She'll be asleep soon. Oh my god. So we finish up, and I was going to take her to see a movie. But the kid thing was just too much, so we head home, and my fingers are already crossed that we make it. When she turns to me while driving and says, Wow, I'm kind of drunk. In my head, I'm like, one drink is all you had. But I ask if I can drive, and she says no. She's going to get in the fast lane and uses her crutch to hit the gas. I say my last prayers, but we made it back to her place. So I wheeled her back to her door and said goodbye. And I lived. The tattoo... It was real. Not me, but I worked as a bartender for a while and heard a lot of horror stories secondhand. This one girl who was a regular came in and told me about an awful Tinder date she had. Not sure of the specifics, but it wasn't bad enough for her not to bring him home afterward. He leaves the next morning. She brushes it off as a one-night stand, and a few days later... Her debit card gets declined. Odd. She's a bartender herself at a fairly busy place in our city and is good about saving. She's usually flush with cash. She goes to check her debit card. Turns out there were a bunch of charges at Best Buy, Grubhub, and a bunch of other stuff. Curiously, she checks her credit cards too. There, she found a bunch of other charges for streaming services. Netflix, Hulu, Sling everything. She goes to confront the guy and finds out he deleted his profile. But she remembers a friend they had in common on Facebook. She reaches out to the mutual friend to try and track him down and it turns out he did the exact same thing to that mutual friend too. I went on a Tinder date a couple months ago on a Sunday afternoon. Met up with the guy around three he had really good energy, funny, complimentary. The place we wanted to go to had a long line, so we went to another restaurant on the water for drinks and appetizers. He starts slamming down my ties. I had one. He had three. They were strong, like I was tipsy, borderline drunk off of one. This bar had a limit of two per person, but he found another bartender to give him his third. He got drunker and drunker and started telling me that he loved me. Jokingly at first, but getting increasingly serious. As we were leaving, he asked me to marry him. I kind of laughed it off and was like, maybe we take it slow. We just met each other. He got so mad that he stormed off and left me on a street corner. Then as soon as he got home, he started texting me to come over and I miss you. This man was 43 years old. We were supposed to meet at 9 p.m. He fell asleep and called me at 9.30. I was already at the place we were supposed to meet at, so 
I told him not to bother coming, as I didn't want to see him now. He asked for another chance, and I agreed. Unfortunately, my dad got very ill and had to spend the next six weeks in the hospital with me visiting him daily. I had no time for dates, and this guy got extremely mad. He made a fake Instagram account, which he used to follow me and everyone that I followed. He then saw me in a friend's Instagram story and showed up at the restaurant we were at. He called me a whore and a liar, and we had to threaten to call the police before he would leave. He had my number and kept calling me using different phones. I knew it was him because he'd just be silent and I could hear him breathing. He did this for 10 months. I was even living in a different country toward the end. One day, I was expecting a call from a friend and had missed a call from a landline, so I called it back. It was his mother. I explained to her what has been happening, and after a long silence, she said, Please don't call the police. I will talk to him. Never heard from him again. I met this girl on Tinder and went for a lunch date. We had a pretty good connection, so we decided to have dinner as well. After having a few drinks, one thing led to another and ended up back at my place. We hooked up and went to sleep. Middle of the night, I wake up, and she's intensely staring at me while she's crouched behind the bed. I ask her if everything's alright. She says yes and got back into bed. I thought, that's a little creepy but probably nothing to worry about. She lays down to cuddle with me, and she's all wet. I figured I must be a stallion. Fast forward to the morning. She's gone, and there's a wet puddle beside the bed. She peed on my floor. I still don't understand it. I had a bathroom. Maybe she got lost and couldn't hold it. Thankfully, I never heard from her again. I talked to this guy for two weeks before we went out. He had no red flags, so we ended up going out to dinner. I said I hadn't been out in a while because I was trying to save money for a washer and dryer. And he says, instead of saving for that, that I should save for a boob job. I didn't even know how to reply. And then he follows up with, no, it's not a bad thing. My sister and mom both had small breasts and both got boob jobs and now they look amazing. This is all before the waitress even brought our drinks. I just got up and left. Smart girl. I went to his place and we hooked up. But after he goes, so you really want to know what I'm into? I was like, sure at which point he grabs my foot, and I have an irrational fear of people touching my feet, so I ran out of there. On my way out of there, I get to the living room, and it turns out this is his parents' house, and I look at his mother and see that she was my old therapist. I was at speed dating years ago, this was the pre-Tinder offline version of dating. You get six minutes with each person. At the end, you tick the ones you like, and if you're mutually interested, you're given each other's details. This guy sits down and gets straight to the point. Okay, you have six minutes to impress me and explain why I should pick you. I excused myself and went to the bathroom for six minutes leaving the guy sitting there by himself. Excellent. Let me know in the comment section if you like these videos and want more. I'd like to take a moment and thank my Patreon patrons. Howard Rowletter, Laura Labs, Psych C. U., Minister Elena C. Henderson, and Jen Parsons. If you have a story you'd like to see featured here, please email me at touchestark676 at gmail.com. 
Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.